being forced by my grade 12 students to get on with the advanced questions. So here we go. These are the practice questions for the grade 12 advanced term 1 exam. What do we have here? In this question, we have to find the current passing through a filament of a bulb in this much seconds and need the charge. So obviously the answer is here in the answer key, but if you're seeing this in an exam, you see a current, which I know the letter for that is I, and I know seconds, well that's a time, and I need charge, which is Q. Q, I, and that should be seconds, that should be time. Q, I, and T. If you head over to your actual formula sheet, you will see something like this. Clearly we're in a circuits question, so I can zoom into this section here. I have my I, if you've forgotten, again, you can see current is I. So they're even writing it out for you, they're spelling it out for you. And over here we have seconds, which is time, you just need to know time is seconds, all right? The unit for time is seconds. And then you have charge. Charge is simply Q, you can see that. Big Q, small Q, doesn't matter. Anyway, long story short, what's the formula? Q equals IT, or this here. I use Q over T. I have written it usually as quit. Q equals IT. Write it however you like. You can do shift solve, you can rearrange, doesn't matter. So Q equals IT, that's easy then. 2 times 80, right? 2 times 80, and I don't know why I'm writing it out. The answer is here, 160. Now it's mentioned work done. Work done, I know is W because it even tells us somewhere here, work is W. So I know that already. And I have the, the value for my work, that's joules, that's the unit for work. It's helpful to know the units. I will go through them as well with you in a second. What is the potential difference applied? Potential difference, that's V. I know that's V because it tells me that's V. Potential difference or voltage. Looks like they're spelling it out for us now, that's nice. What do I need to find? The potential difference. That's the formula that I went over with you. W equals QV, rearrange. I did it like this, W equals QV. And of course, rearranged or shift solve, doesn't matter. V is W divided by Q. 3,200 divided by 160. 160 is your previous answer. Just bear in mind, if you have a part B, if this answer was wrong, it's fine. You use the same answer down here, you will get full marks for this section. Even though you've lost the mark here, fine, you lost your mark once, this is called error carried forward. You will actually get full marks here. Just don't forget, formula, numbers, answer, unit. You have to remember your units, okay? Next is asking for power dissipated through, dissipated through the filament. So power, we have these three choices, IV, I squared R, V squared over R. Three choices, you'll get the same answer no matter what you pick. In this case, well, we have V and we have I, so I can just use PIV, P equals IV. I will multiply two with 20, that's it. If we had a resistance, we could have done it. If you wanted to, you could have found the resistance and then done it, but that's pointless because we have a formula directly that will give us power. Which is a poor conductor of electricity, that is the equivalent of me saying what is an insulator. Insulator. So when you're talking about insulators, rubber clearly, or any other non-metal such as wood, plastic, uh, what else do we have? I'm running it, uh, wool, cloth, anything that's not really uh, metal. Usually metals are given as conductors. Conductors, copper, aluminium, brass, gold, iron, silver, all of these metals are good conductors. So remember that, okay, because the next exam will probably ask you for a good conductor. You'll look for the metal. Very nice. What's happening here? The figure shows below this graph and you can see a nice straight line graph. That is an ohmic resistor. What have I done? That is an ohmic resistor. If it was a different graph, if it was going to be maybe with a little curve in it, or a curve in the other way, it will be a non-ohmic. Ohmic just follows Ohm's law. We can do V over I, we can find the resistance. Non-ohmic doesn't always follow Ohm's law, depending on the conditions. So those are the two graphs you need to look at when you talk about ohmic and non-ohmic. Now, we have a wire with this radius and a resistance. You have another one, 3R, what is the resistance? So we need to figure this out. Well, you're not given this formula in the exam. You'll just go straight into the question. We have a radius, we have a resistance, we have a length. We're talking about a wire with a material. And that is going to be a wire with a material. We're going to look at this one over here. 
This is the idea over here. I know that because, well, we've got an R. We have a radius. A radius is related to the area because if you know the area of a circle is 2 pi, not 2 pi r, is pi r squared. So that will be useful. A length, we have a length of a wire. There's the L. And this will be related to my area. We need R. We have the material, that's the resistivity, rho, lazy p. So let's see what we can do. And this is how I've explained it. What I normally do is I've written the formula, it's written already here for you, Ra over L. So this equals Ra over L. Problem now is I need the resistance. I have to change this formula. The way I have done it for you is I introduced this formula in the original way. R equals rho L over A. That's how I originally showed you the formula. The formula sheet, for some reason, has given it like this. But that's easy. You can rearrange it, right? This is grade 9 level math. Of course, you're good at grade 9 maths. Multiply both sides by L. Cancel, cancel. Rho L equals R A. I don't need to insult your intelligence by telling you that to find R, I will divide by A, right? Divide both sides by A. Done, done. Rho L over A. Okay, so now you know how to do algebra. Let's go on with the actual question, shall we? I want to know the new resistance if I increase my radius. Originally, if I don't have any values, I can just consider them as 1. 1 times 1 divided by, this is supposed to be pi r squared. It's because it's an area. I am talking about radius, so I'm going to substitute pi r squared in here. So instead of writing pi r squared, I'll write 1 times 1 divided by, I know pi is 3.14, I'm just going to ignore it. I'm just going to call it 1. I'm going to make everything 1. R, I'm just going to call it 1 as well, but I have to square it. The reason I'm doing this is to see what my original value will be. 1 times 1 is 1, divided by 1 times 1, 1 squared, 1. Now, let's see. I am going to now triple my radius. I am not going to have the 3 anymore. I will keep everything else the same. Let me just do a little line here. I will have my rho L, 1 times 1, divided by, I know this is supposed to be pi, I don't care, 1, times pi r. What is my new r? 3. 1 times 3 squared. The area of a, of a circle is pi r squared. My radius has tripled squared. 1 times 1, 1. Divided by 1 times 3 is 3 squared, 9. 1 over 9 or r over 9. That's all you need to do. I'm going to give you another example. What if I said to you, I will double my length and double my radius. If I have 2L and 2R, what do I do now? Let's find out. Set everything to 1 except the thing I'm changing. I'm going back into the radius again, so I will use pi r squared again. So where can I do it? I will do it up here. Rho, call it 1. I doubled my L, so that becomes 2. I then double my radius. I'm going to use pi r squared. Pi, I'll call it 1. R, I have doubled. I will call it 2 squared. What happens now? That becomes 2 divided by 2 squared, which is 4, which becomes a half. My new value here will be 1 over 2 r. I hope that makes sense. You just set everything to 1 except the variable that you're changing. That will get you the answer, whatever you need to find, for any formula. Not just this formula, any formula. Set everything to 1 and, and change the thing you're trying to find. All right. This is a diagram asking about this current flowing in and out of a junction. You need to know the reading on A. So we have current coming in here, a current coming in here. Don't know what's happening at A yet, but I know I have this coming out, out, and out. So I have three coming out. This is just Kirchhoff's law. The current coming in is equal to the current coming out. So if I'm going to do that, well, let's see what's coming in. In total, I have three plus two coming in. And what's coming out? 4 plus 1 plus 2. I have 5 coming in so far. And I have how much? 5, 6, 7 coming out so far. Well, that's not equal right now. So that means I need to balance it. 5 plus something must equal to 7. It won't take a genius to find out 5 plus 2 equals 7, right? 7 minus 5 equals 2. 
If you really need to use shift solve, you can. But anyway, this must be two amps coming in. And didn't ask us for the direction, but now we know it's two amps coming in. Because we only had five coming in. We had seven coming out. Okay. Now we need to know the characteristics of series and parallel circuits. So we've done this quite a lot. In current, in current, in a series circuit, let's draw it out, shall we? Here is a little battery. Here is a series circuit. Two resistors in series. Now, the, oh, that's terrible. The current is flowing through in one path. So the current everywhere in series is the same. The energy, the voltage, is shared between the two. The voltage will be used in the first one, and then it will be used in the second one by each charge. So the voltage is shared, the current is the same. It's only one current, there is only one path. If I had five electrons passing this way, I must have five coming down here. And I'll have five across here. It's the same five, this is the same five. They're friends, they're walking through the same path together. They're using some energy and then some more energy, and the energy is different. Maybe this was 10 volts from the battery. Maybe this was an easy resistor to pass through. Maybe that was only 3. That means this will take 7 volts. 10 minus 3 is 7. All of the energy will be used until it gets to the end. Very nice. Parallel circuit, slightly different, not too much different. Here is my parallel circuit. Now you can see something. We have a junction. Current, the electrons that we had, split up. Some of the electrons go this way, some of the electrons go that way. So now the current splits in parallel. However, each electron, let's say they had 10 volts again from the battery, each electron had 10, 10, 10. They will pass through one resistor and back through the other. And they use all 10 volts. The other electron still has his 10, passes through the resistor, and then ends up going back home again as well. Each electron passed through one path, one resistor, which is telling me that if I had a 10 volt battery in parallel, the voltage is 10 volts for both. The voltage is equal. That's what we've written here. Let's go back to the current here. I said the current was the same everywhere. The current is equal. I said the energy is shared between the two components. It is shared between the two components. Over here, I said the total current splits into two paths. The total current splits into paths. Of course, if there's more, we will add more paths. The voltage is the same. The current flowing through here has the same energy as the current flowing through here, and so on and so on. They haven't been through any resistors yet in this case. Now, we have a bit of a mixed circuit. This one causes a lot of problems for those who are not uh, following the idea of circuits. So I'll try my best to keep this as simple as I can. This is broke it down for you. Sometimes it asks you directly for the voltage across a certain resistor, and then you have to follow the steps to get to it. This is the three-step solution to find the voltage across the resistor. So let's see what we have. We have an equivalent resistance. Well, that's what we need to find, right? So what do we have here? This is a resistor in series with the battery. So that's R1, fine. Then, oh, there's a junction. If there's a junction, I split into two, I know I'm going into a parallel circuit. I now have two resistors in parallel. These two resistors over here, they are in series with this resistor here. This is the same path. It splits, so these two are parallel with each other, but they're both in the same path as this. If an electron was to flow through here, if I had an electron, each electron will pass through this resistor, and then one of the other resistors. Each electron has just passed through two resistors. Or they went this way and passed through this one. Either way, they passed through two. That's how I know that this is in series with these two. To find the total, you have to find this plus whatever the equivalent here is. Now, if you wanted to find the equivalent resistors in parallel, you can go ahead and use the rule 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2, 1 over 20, 1 over 20, and you can use a little trick. Directly in your calculator, you can do 1 over 20, 1 over 20, minus 1. Straight away, it will take you to your answer of 10. Otherwise, you have to flip both sides because 1 over R, and you want to get R, you have to flip. I have taught it that way. The way I have taught it is R is 1 over 20, 1 over 20, in a bracket, minus 1, which is, of course, 10. And how I know it is 10 so easily without having to bat an eyelid, apart from the fact that the answer is here, is because if both resistors are equal, the total is always half. 
just so happens to be. If this is 20 and 20, the total will be 10. If this was 40 and 40, the total would have been 20, 100, 100, 50, so on. So that's a little trick, so you don't have to go ahead and do it. But in this case, it's a written question. So I strongly suggest you write the formula, write the numbers, write the answer. So now that I've figured out this is 10, I want the total resistance. That's this plus this, 10 plus 10. And you have 20 ohms as my total resistance. If I want the current now through this 10 ohm resistor, I need to remember that the 10 ohm resistor is connected to the battery. It's the first thing that the current will see. That means I need to know the total current flowing out of the battery because it's passing through this resistor. In order for me to do that, I need to know the total resistance, which I have, and I need the total voltage, which I have. I is V total divided by R total. 60 over 20, 3 amps. This is telling me I have 3 amps passing through this resistor here. And that's passing through the others. They will split over here. And I can kind of guess it's going to be half and half, by the way, because they're both equal, so it'll be half and half. They might not be equal, so that it might not be half and half. But in this case, that is what the case is. Anyway. What is the voltage across the 20 ohm resistor? This is where people start to get a bit uh, confuddled. This is where we need to think a little bit more. You don't want to get discombobulated by this question. What do we have here? V what is the voltage across the 20 ohm resistor? Hmm, fine. Well, I don't really know the current flowing through this resistor. So I can't just do V equals IR, I equals V over R. I could use the logic that I just applied by knowing it is exactly half. So now I am making an assumption that this is 1.5 volts. Uh, sorry, 1.5 amps. I am making that assumption, but I don't want to... Oh, God. Oh, what have I done? Have I ruined everything? I've lost everything. I don't want to make that assumption. So what I do need to know is I need to know the voltage across this section. As we mentioned up here, the voltage is the same. Whatever the current here is, the voltage is the same. It doesn't matter. I can go ahead and find this voltage, but how? Okay, two ways. You can do V equals I R parallel. The I coming in, I coming into the section is the same current coming out of the section. So if I look at the whole thing, the total current coming in was three. The total resistance was 10 and then you will get 30 volts. You might think, why am I using 10? Why am I not using 20? Well, because they're supposed to be the same. If this was going to be 20, then I would have a different value for the resistance. It will not add up to 60. That would not work. So what do we do? If you are confused, no idea what's going on, and you're trying to figure out which value to use, there's another way. There's actually more than one other way, but I'll, I'll stick to one. You can find this voltage, can't you? V equals IR. We found the current flowing through here. So that's easy for me to do. I found that this was 3 amps. So if I have the battery voltage of 60, I go ahead and calculate this one. 3 multiplied by 10. I know this is going to be 30. This voltage is 30. These two will simply be 60 minus 30, which also happens to be 30 which is also making more sense because this is 10 ohms, the total is 10, they are equal, which kind of makes sense. The voltage will be half and half. So there's lots of ways for you to verify your answer. Sometimes these numbers will be different and perhaps I'll make another video for that one because I don't want to make this one far too long. So if you want me to go ahead and do more circuits with you, just drop a comment, let me know. I'm going to stop the video here because we're moving on to the new topic. So I will continue that in another video. Thank you.